we improve, where we succeed. It is our heritage, and this is our diploma. The Accord LX from Honda. Now lease a 2002 Accord LX for $239 a month for 39 months. Morning News. 6.30, 64 degrees outside. It is Tuesday morning. It's the 11th of September. Police in Northern Virginia say someone is targeting kids and they have a warning for all parents. Pesticides will now be a part of your regular routine every summer. New plans to fight West Nile virus ahead. And I'm Amanda Bergen live in Sky Fox. Some problems in your commute this morning on 95 northbound in Woodridge. We'll tell you what just how you need to avoid it coming up. And good morning. I'm Michael Gargiulo in this morning, a little earlier for Todd Wallace. I'm Allison Seymour. Welcome to Fox 5 Morning News. And if my math is right, I think we have like 10 more days or something till fall. We do, but, but it, it, this is great. 64 yeah. degrees this morning. Let's check in with Tom. Tom, we're feeling it this morning. Get ready to feel a little bit cooler temperatures too come Friday and Saturday with highs only in the low 70s. So this is going to be a great week. Today, nearly perfect. I give it about a nine and a half. Tomorrow I'll give it a ten because uh, it's just going to be beautiful. Cold front moved through the area late yesterday, triggering a round of thunderstorms here and there. They were scattered, not everyone getting in on the action, but now high pressure sliding in. Beautiful starry skies overnight last night, and the temperatures have been responding accordingly and dropping. Currently 64 at Reagan National. That's 11 degrees cooler than it was yesterday. Dulles right now is at 59. 54 in Manassas, so temperatures really around the area. You get out into the north and northwest in the suburbs, and they're down in the 50s, and I think it's going to be cooler tomorrow morning. Today's high, 80 degrees. The average high is 82, and it's going to get even cooler tomorrow. Beautiful weather. you got to like this one. All right, much more in just a minute. Let's head up to this week's guru of gridlock. Here's Amanda Bergen up at SkyFox. Good morning. Good morning, Todd. Not such great news here. We have some problems. 95 northbound in Woodbridge. Take a look down below. You can see here a disabled tractor trailer truck. This is on 95 north of the Potomac Mills sign. It's in the second lane from the left that is now blocked. People are just trying to get by. Uh, motorist assistance is on the scene there trying to help, but that tractor trailer is causing some problems right now. Delays from this disabled truck go back to the car rest area. And again, this is right at the Potomac Mills sign. Also, we have reports of a disabled car just a little bit further north of this spot. That's been pushed over to the right shoulder, but it is causing some problems. So some significant delays on 95 northbound in Woodbridge this morning. Also some problems a little further north on 95 in Springfield at 644. Take a look at this. We took this just a few minutes ago. You can see here a lot of traffic here. No accidents to report, but the express lanes are moving well. The regular lanes, however, very slow. Just a lot of traffic here this morning. Let's go over to Marna Woken has more of our Fox 5 on time traffic. Marna. Good morning, Amanda. Well, thank you very much. It's looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the Beltway at uh, Route 50. Just as you're going uh, onto the ramp of the, onto the Beltway south of Route 50, this is the shot of the ramp. Things are looking pretty good. You'll have no problems as you make your way into uh, that direction. Everything is up to speed. We'll be back to update your ride into work on Fox 5 on time traffic. Allison, back to you. Okay, Marna, thank you. 633 now. It looks like an encore of historic proportions is now all but a done deal. NBA legend Michael Jordan is apparently set to return to the court as a Washington wizard. Fox 5's Audrey Barnes joins us now live from MCI Center with more. Good morning, Audrey. Good morning, Allison. Reporters from several different media outlets stopped Michael Jordan outside a Chicago restaurant last night, and those reporters are now saying he all but confirmed that he would return to play basketball for the Washington Wizards. An official announcement is expected sometime in Washington next week. For the last five months, Michael has been putting himself through a very rigorous physical training program. He's dropped about 25 pounds, and despite back spasms and tendonitis in his right knee. He has been scrimmaging with the likes of Jawan Howard, Penny Hardaway, Antoine Walker. And during his impromptu uh, press conference last night, Michael said he's doing it all for the love of the game and fans are loving the possibility of a second comeback. And I just hope that if he comes back, you know, he's, he just can maintain his, his status as being one of the greatest basketball players of all time. He's going to give them a lot of leadership. He's going to inspire the team to play hard. Yeah, yeah I do.
Now, the NBA is holding league meetings in Orlando September 20th, and Michael is expected to announce his intentions before that meeting because, of course, he will have to give up ownership of the Washington Wizards if he does decide to become a player once again. Now, the Wizards say if Michael does come out of retirement, they are prepared, prepared for a flurry of last-minute ticket purchases, and plans are also in the works to put as many Wizards games as possible on television. All they're waiting for now is for Michael to make an official announcement. He says he'll make some kind of announcement within the next 10 days here in Washington, D.C. Reporting live from the MCI Center, Audrey Barnes, Fox 5 News. Okay, Audrey, exciting stuff this morning. Jordan has been preparing to make his final decision for months now. Again, he's been working out at a gym in Chicago and testing his skills against some current NBA stars. Our own Daryl Joyner was there last month and got some encouraging opinions from Jordan's competition. Michael is Michael. You know, he just added a few more years to him. I mean, he's not jumping like he used to, but getting his jump shot off, um, being smarter than other players, uh, using screens really well, and, uh, and, and playing good basketball. I don't think he's ever going to be the same, Jordan, but I think he's still great enough to, to lead the league in scoring and do those types of things. I don't think he's the same guy he was when he left at the peak of his game, but um, I still think he's good enough where he could lead the league in scoring and, and do a lot of the things he used to do. Coming up in our next half hour, we will go live to that gym in Chicago to see how Michael's hometown is reacting to the news of his comeback. I want to turn to some other news now. Closer to home, D.C. police are asking for your help in finding two missing children. And they are 14-year-old Yolanda Beard and 4-year-old Shante Adams of Northeast. They were last seen on Sunday. Police said the girls were on the 2200 block of Everett Street, Northeast. The 14-year-old called the 3-year-old's mother to say she was taking the younger girl home to the 1100 block of Moore Street, Two, however, never showed up. If you have any information, you are asked to call D.C. police. Police, meanwhile, in Virginia say someone may be stalking little children there. As Fox 5's Melanie Aldwick reports, six different children say that they were recently approached by strangers. Children still play outside in the Hampton Oaks neighborhood, but not far anymore from the watchful eyes of their parents. I don't care what anybody has to say. You don't go talk to them. You don't talk to anybody in a vehicle. You're to stay in front of the house. I need to be able to see you at all times. Five Stafford County children in three days were approached by a pair of strangers. Saturday's incident involved an eight-year-old boy and two 12-year-old boys on bikes around 9 p.m. at Bridgeport Circle and Greenspring Drive. Their mothers agreed to speak with us. The car stopped them and uh, approached them to get in the car. The boys said no, and they asked them if they knew a, a certain boy that might live in the neighborhood, and they said no, and they headed home. And... They, that's when the guy said, you better not be lying to me, and he spit. Mm -hmm. And you said they just came running in the they house? They came running in the house scared. The truck is described as a small blue pickup with a silver checkerboard detail on the door and round fog lights. The passenger who spoke to the boys was a black male wearing a black Yankees cap. Just two days before that, less than a mile away in the Settlers Landing subdivision, an eight-year-old girl was approached on Arbor Drive first, then a six-year-old boy, both in the same manner as Saturday's incident. Scary. Mm -hmm. Very scary. Police say the car used on Thursday was an older model silver or gray Buick Skylark. The driver, a white male with straight blonde hair. The passenger, a black male with a large afro. A similar incident happened to a 12-year-old girl on Tuesday in Spotsylvania County. It scares the daylights out of me, definitely. Though notes went home from school and police patrol the area, the comfort zone here may never come back. Police say the Spotsylvania suspect acted alone. Now, he is described as an olive-skinned male with dark, straight hair covering his ears. Now, even though his description doesn't match, Spotsylvania and Stafford County Police are working together on these cases, and they are sharing what they learn with the FBI's Silva Lisk Task Force. From the Fox 5 Newsroom, I'm Melanie Olnwick. And Stafford County Police say they have increased their marked and unmarked car patrols. Anyone with information is asked to count, contact the Stafford County Detectives. Allison. Your television or radio may help stop a kidnapper. That's the sound of the new emergency alert system being introduced to the Washington area. When a child is abducted, you'll hear that sound on several area radio and television stations, including Fox 5. It will be followed by a description of the crime and the child. The AMBER program, which is named after a little girl who was abducted and killed in Texas, is already being used in 19 states and is being credited with helping to rescue 16 children. 
In an effort to stop the spread of the West Nile virus, Baltimore officials have launched an expansive ground assault against mosquitoes. For the fifth time, trucks are spraying pesticide in the Baltimore City area. The Department of Agriculture says residents can expect even more spraying throughout the year. It seems the West Nile virus is here to stay, and public health officials say they face a long-term campaign to get rid of mosquitoes and to educate the public. It is 640 right now, 64 degrees outside. Your kids could someday use 911 to save someone's life, maybe their own, but only if they know how to use it. Five simple things you can teach your children today that could save their life tomorrow. That's coming up in a live interview. A ship is found buried under a busy street after 150 years. Now it will be buried again. It's next. And let's take a live look outside. We're going to have a check of your weather and your on-time traffic. That's coming up. And doctors have determined a common diet supplement sent three Maryland state troopers to the hospital. That's after the top of the hour. Wednesday, all day, it's Macy's Super One Day Sale. Use your extra savings coupons. Jewelry, 30 to 50% off, plus an extra 15% off selections. Sportswear for her, an extra 30 to 40% off. Men's sweaters and sports shirts, $19.99 to $29.99. Lily and Ashley bed in a bag, $49.99 with coupon. Tools of the trade, 14-piece cook set, $49.99. Macy's Super One Day Sale, Wednesday. Preview day Tuesday, open 9 a.m. This September, get Comcast. Get educational back-to-school programming on Discovery, Animal Planet, and the Learning Channel. Get Comcast Sportsnet and catch Cal Ripken's Farewell Tour. Get HBO for originals like The Sopranos and the epic miniseries Band of Brothers. Get Comcast digital cable with HBO and get free installation. Plus, call by 1 p.m. and you could be connected by tonight. This September, get Comcast. Food down, walk away, nobody gets hurt. Let's get him! Yeah! I got him! Think you're tough enough to drive a Tacoma? Give me back! Join the club. Introducing the double cab with over five feet of bed length. You just can't mess with a man's salad. Word up. Here's what we know about Marlowe's Labor Day sale. It's big, really big. Bigger than any department store furniture sale. Bigger than any furniture store. It's Marlowe's biggest holiday sale of the year. With more furniture, better prices, and one year free financing. But the biggest thing about this sale is... It's big. Really, really big. The Labor Day sale at Marlowe. It's the big one. Ends Wednesday at 10 p.m. Don't miss it. Marlowe, Washington's furniture superstore. Lemons had me work late. Good night. My carpool. Hi. Need a ride home? That would be nice. You're in luck. Because if you ride share or use transit and an unexpected emergency comes up, Commuter Connections guarantees you a free ride home. Really? Call 800-745-RIDE to register before your boss surprises you with overtime or your kids get sick. Commuter Connections will get you home free. Great. Register at commuterconnections.org. This looks promising. I didn't even know these homes were here. Get your free copy of New Homes Guide. Call 1-800-999-9947. Construction workers in San Francisco have discovered a rare treasure. They stumbled upon a 150-year-old ship while digging out the basement for a new hotel. Now, historians believe that the ship was built in 1840. It was used to transport 49ers. These are miners, not the football players, oh. to San Francisco right. in search of gold. They came in 1849. Archaeologists during the gold rush. Archaeologists have also uncovered bits of cargo, including brass buttons, glass beads, likely intended for trade, and they also found some charred wheat seeds. After more excavation and documentation, that ship is going to be reburied. That's an amazing story. Yeah, isn't that incredible? You see the outline of the ship there that they found. But no gold. <laughs> no, yeah, no, no, gold. no that they, gold they mysteriously the... <laughs> disappeared. <laughs> Don't know where it could be. Well, we have a golden forecast oh. today. Tom says it's a 10, everybody. Hey, I'll tell you what, after looking at the next five days, five day forecast, I think, you know, on a scale of one to 10, I've got four days that are just about 10s. That's fabulous. Four out of five. That's gorgeous. Very, very nice. In fact, it takes us right into the weather headlines because it's going to be cool. Yesterday, we did hit 87 for the second day in a row, so unseasonably warm. Very comfortable next three days, and then it gets even cooler. Later on this week, and in fact, into the weekend, it is going to be something else. Here's our look across the country. 
really not much of a blemish here or there. We do have some morning fog in LA. We've got a little bit of rainfall north of the Montana border, down in uh, extreme southern Texas and southern Florida. We have the front move through the area. Our skies are crystal clear. It's going to be beautiful. Oh, and this is quite still impressive. This is Hurricane Aaron. It looks dangerously close to the U.S., does it not? But it is starting to move away and move north now. It's still about 460 miles or so south of Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Winds that were up to 120 miles per hour yesterday are down to 90, but still very impressive eye. Now the cold front that moved through our area is going to help deflect Aaron and move it to the north. It should pick up speed. It's moving north at about 8 miles per hour, but once it gets into the cooler waters, it'll weaken even more. So you can see the rainfall yesterday. Heaviest rain really was east of the metro area, although we did have the rumble of thunder, some pretty good downpours here and there around the area, but really it was Prince George's, Anne Arundel County, down towards St. Mary's, Charles. It really came down eastern shore as well. Some areas getting well over an inch, and uh, some of us uh, didn't really get much at all. And it wasn't expected to be a total uh, widespread event, but uh, we did have the scattered activity. 64 degrees, that's 11, cooler than it was yesterday. We do have 50s that are found out in the suburbs, 55 right now. Around the Manassas area, it was down to 54 in Cumberland, still around that temperature. 55 in Pittsburgh and Detroit and Chicago. Very, very pleasant weather. In fact, most of the country really is just basking in fine, fine weather. With the exception of down in Florida, they were just inundated with rain on Sunday and Monday. The ground is saturated, and again, more downpours uh, can be expected today. There's a little disturbance just off southwest coast of Florida. But this is really quite impressive on the satellite picture there. Here's the rainfall that moved through the area. They had heavy downpours in New York City. Boston got a little bit of rain, and now they're going to be looking at clearing conditions as well up in New England. In fact, all across the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes into the Midwest, just gorgeous. So this cold front that brought us the rain yesterday will help deflect Aaron up toward the north. In fact, there's another disturbance, uh, Tropical Depression number 7, is still well out there. Uh, it's starting to show signs of organization. If it does become a tropical storm, its name will be Felix. But I think this cold front may also help deflect that one in the near future as well. High pressure is going to settle in for a couple of very nice days. As you see, front number 1 move on through the area. Here comes high pressure. And here comes the reinforcing cool air. Now this one, this cold front, should give us a chance of a shower, I think, Thursday night, still in the forecast, but back behind it, some low 70s for highs. 80 today, look at tomorrow's high, 78. Takes a while for that cool, dry air to move in. And then another cold front. There it is, only 79 on Thursday, near 80 degrees, and then 74 for a high on Friday. Saturday, 73. This is with low humidity and a lot of sunshine to boot. So this could be a fantastic weekend and pretty nice five-day forecast. All right, much more in just a minute. But first, a check on traffic before you hit the door. Here's Amanda Burton. Hey, good morning to you, Tom. We have a lot of problems on the road already this morning. A lot of people this Tuesday morning. Check out the Beltway here at 66. You can see there's a lot of traffic on 66, especially leading to the ramp to get to both the inner and outer loop of the Beltway here. And as far back as we can see, a lot of headlights coming eastbound on 66. Also want to give you an update on that disabled tractor trailer truck. It's in the second lane from the left at the Potomac Mill sign. That's 95 northbound coming at northbound in Woodbridge. Also reports of a disabled car a little bit further north there. Now the delays from this aren't particularly bad, but as far as we can see as we flew up 95 northbound, a lot of cars on the road there causing some significant delays. A lot of cars there all the way to the mixing bowl, in fact, from Woodbridge to the mixing bowl. That's your Fox 5 on time traffic. Now let's go back down to Allison in the studio. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Amanda, and thank you. Recently, there have been problems with area 911 systems, but there's a new push to improve awareness and to make sure the system is used correctly. Now joining us this morning is Captain Jim Sharon, director of the Fairfax County 911 Center. Good morning. Good morning. Well, we have seen some troubles. We don't want to dwell on it, but with D.C. and Anne Arundel County, how has uh, Fairfax County made sure that your system is up to par and running well? I'm sorry, I just lost the first part of your question. There. Tell me, how do you keep your 911 system in Fairfax County running smoothly? Well, first of all, we try to employ the latest technology. In fact, we are upgrading some of our systems coming up this spring, and we've just upgraded our radio system, which is a key element of that system. But the biggest component of this is training. We spend a lot of time training our employees as they come on, and we also do recurrent training and upgrading their training as they, as they go through the, uh, the, their employment with Fairfax County. Also, you've said if you see a problem, you attack it head on right away. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, uh, we have to uh, look at the latest technology and uh, deal with a very complex system. Uh, there's a myriad of technologies involved, the radio system, the phone system the uh, computer assisted dispatch system. We have to make it all work and every once in a while we do run into conflicts and we 
uh, identify what those are and we go after them and, and put together the training that's necessary to uh, address that problem. This is National 911 Day. What are you focusing on today? Uh, today we're really looking at uh, training. Uh, we have a both a very young population and, and in Fairfax County we have a, a, a growing senior population, both of which have challenges in dealing with the 911 system. Oftentimes our seniors are very reluctant and, and not, often minimize some of the problems that they have and are, are a little bit reluctant to call us. So we encourage them to call us before situations get out of hand. Similarly, the fire department's life safety education section and also the police department's crime prevention officers go out and they do training with some of the youngsters in the community on how to use 911 properly, making sure that they give their addresses because very frequently with our enhanced 911 system, it's, it's all too easy to uh, not give an address uh, in which, uh, you know, because they live at their homes and uh, they uh, will uh, rely on that system to provide us with information. Oftentimes they're calling us from away from where that scene is or, or, or away, away from their home and they don't have access to E911, the enhanced system, and uh, we need to have the proper information to deliver the services to them. So we try to educate them as to uh, give us their name, their address, uh, where they're calling from, what the nature of the problem is, as concisely as possible, and then to stay on the phone with us until we can get them the services they need. Captain Sharon, we have uh, indeed five tips that you've passed along. We want to just show them now, and I'll just go through them briefly. You say be calm, speak in a clear voice. As you just mentioned, give your name, address, and phone number. Don't hang up until the other person on the other line hangs up, and to never make prank calls, never call 911 Absolutely. as a joke. So these are the tips. Uh, these are the main ones that you are stressing today. Absolutely. Okay, tell me too, you have a lot of uh, cell phones. How do you deal with the addresses not showing up to the homes now? Well, cell phones, in fact, have outstripped our wire line or, or regular residential or business calls into the 911 center. And uh, cell phones do not provide us with our automatic number or automatic, automatic location information. And as a consequence, we don't have that to immediately put into our computer aided dispatch system. We have to ask each caller and manually enter that information into the system, which slows down our response time in getting folks the services that they need. But surely you don't want people to, to stop, call, to uh, not call. Oh, no, absolutely. Okay. Uh, we would much rather have too many people call us about a, a single incident and uh, just to ensure that we get the response and nobody call. Okay, thank you very much, Captain Sharon. Thank you. Okay. Michael, we want to say, too, that uh, this pamphlet is available. And you can get this by www.savekids.org. It has, which is really neat, a list uh, or a form that you can fill out that lists the well, emergency that's a very good numbers. Idea. So go online, get this. Part of National 911. And Day. teach your kids to do that. Yeah. 6.52 right now. Beloved cruise sets sail tonight. And Holly <laughs> Morris is giving us a peek on board. McDonald's is now coming right into your car. Coming up, we're live with the new McMorning radio show on a familiar station. Plus, a controversial book claims the Supreme Court justice could have changed the outcome of the 2000 election. The author is going to join us live. And for news, weather, and sports, any time of day, log on to fox5dc.com. If you thought Temptation Island pushed the limits, be there when 16 sexy singles set sail on the love cruise. There's a camera here. Yes, there's cameras everywhere. It's television's newest real-life soap opera. You hurt people maliciously. Love Cruise, The Maiden Voyage, tonight at 9 on Fox 5. It's a secret getaway <laughs> in more ways than one. Bruce Willis, next friends. Tonight at 7 on Fox 5. Why drive all over town to compare cars? Make one stop at CarMax and test drive an Accord, Taurus, and Camry. We have nearly every make and model, 10 times more cars than the average dealer, so you get the car you want. CarMax, the way car buying should be. Why do warehouse clubs and superstores offer the lowest prices? Because they sell in volume. CarMax, the auto superstore, has up to 10 times more cars than the average dealer, so we can afford to offer below Blue Book prices. CarMax, the way car buying should be. Why do the four giant Bell phone monopolies want toes and dingles so badly? How about this? Section 4A states, Neither the FCC nor any state shall have authority to regulate the rates, charges, terms, or conditions for any high-speed data service. Toes and Dingle will turn the four Bell giants loose on America and then prohibit the FCC and all 50 states from protecting us. So, this is why our parents told us to read the fine print. 
We know there are many of you out there who have called 1-800-DENTIST, and yet, for whatever reason, you still haven't seen a dentist, which means somehow we didn't do our job because we haven't convinced you how important it is for you to see a dentist every six months or how easy it is for 1-800-DENTIST to match you with a dentist that's just right for you and your family. So come on, how about another chance? 1-800-DENTIST has matched thousands of people with pre-screened dentists. Why not you? My hope for my granddaughter's future is that they will be able to take care of themselves and a family if they choose to have one. Education is the bottom line. The more you learn, the more money you can earn. Nobody's going to pay you for being a dummy. I wish that every parent who wanted a voucher could get one. Poor people have very little choice, and the child will have a better chance in getting an education if the parents have a choice. Customer Appreciation Day start tomorrow at Hex. Use your Hex charge and take an extra 15% off all sale and clearance purchases, 10% in the home store. The right choices make all the difference. Eight single men and eight single women are about to embark on a romantic journey of a lifetime. Fox's Love Cruise premieres tonight at 9, and Holly Morris is live on the Odyssey cruise ship <laughs> on the D.C. waterfront this morning with a look at the premiere. Good morning, Holly. You can just call me Julie McCoy this morning. Uh, hello. I'm the activities director. <laughs> Listen, though, Allison, this isn't the love boat we're used to, and being Julie, I'm not so sure that Captain Steubing would approve. But, hey, it's the year 2001, and when the Love Cruise sets sail, it will no doubt make waves. Love on the boat may be exciting and new, but on this sexy sea cruise, love is a hot, steamy competition that has the high seas sizzling. Right, love cruise is a fantasy situation. It's a mating dance. We've got people hot and heavy for each other. Um, there's a lot of touching going on. Um, there's a lot of looking into each other's eyes. Creators of the new reality series picked cozy coves and wonderful waterfalls nestled in romantic rainforests to get the couples in the mood. We found just the most amazing spot in the world. Not only is this a beautiful cove with a white sand beach, the whole nine, but right over here, there's like rainforest backing up behind us, palm trees, cliffs. It's just unbelievable. Such a spot. Add a little mood lighting and some seductive sounds of the sea, and we find our singles hoping to make a love connection. I'm just very hopeful that I will find a man who I am attracted to, who I love, who is financially secure, and I'm just praying that all those factors come together. You're adorable. You have, like, gorgeous eyes. Thank you. Really. I'm kind of blushing right now. Oh, <laughs> I don't know who I'm going to meet as far as girls go. There's got eight single girls there, so um, who knows if I might meet my, you know, uh, the one, you know. Who knows? Crew members say the singles are ready to take the plunge into the dating, mating, and relating scenario. They're not shy. Let's put it that way. They're not shy at all. Romantically, people are getting busy. There's some physical things going on. It's pretty, it's pretty juicy. It's while some members have very specific turn-ons. The kind of guy I'm looking for would be someone outgoing, funny, um, laid back, not too serious, supportive, friendly, and kind of wild. Others are allowing fate to deal this hand. I'm going to be myself. I'll be myself and I'll, I'll just, you know, let the let the cards fall where they may, I guess. Whichever direction the love winds blow, you will be able to catch all the action. All of our rooms are decked out with some very nice surveillance cameras. And as you can see, we're going to be able to watch every little thing that goes on in those rooms. Hookups or heartbreaks, this maiden voyage is making another run, promising something for everyone. Now, being the wholesome yet fun person that I am, our little love cruise this morning is going to be a whole lot tamer, though it is going to have to do with singles and good places in the D.C. area to find some romantic fun. So, yep, my activities calendar says, Allison, it's going to be a pretty fun morning. Back to you. No doubt about it. Thanks so much, Holly. And there's much more ahead this morning. Here are Lark McCarthy and Michael Gargiulo. Good morning. Good morning, Allison. Thank you very much. Well, this morning, the big talk is about an on-court encore from Michael Jordan. Man considered to be one of the greatest athletes of all time offers his most telling comments to date about a possible return to playing basketball this time for the Wizards. 
I think it's going to be great. I think it's great for the town, great for the community, and also great for the, uh, the Wizards. To be honest with you, I was kind of hoping that um, he wouldn't. Washingtonians have mixed reactions to this pretty certain Jordan possible comeback, maybe. We have live team coverage from the MCI Center and Chicago, plus insight from a local sports journalist. Also ahead, a California grand jury says it will not investigate an obstruction of justice.